All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this laptop. This is a Samsung. Yep. Okay, it's a Samsung NP350E7C-A01US or 350E. There's the model number there and the full model number here. All right, so anyways, first thing, we're going to remove the battery. Um, not really absolutely necessary for what I'm doing, but uh, let's go ahead and remove it anyways. You can see these two tabs, they pop and they stay uh, clicked out and then you can pull the battery out and then when there's no battery it just springs back in Okay, um, I only need to change the hard drive on this But I'm gonna open up all these little panels just to show you what it looks like inside All right, so the screws actually stay attached to the plastic I'm gonna get in here and we're gonna pull this up at least it seems like it. Okay. Oh, yeah There we go. Then we can go ahead and lift this up and there you go. You can see the wireless card here It's a little bit dusty in there. I'll brush it a little bit just to clean it not, so it's not too much dust, but uh, all right. Here you can see if you need to remove the wireless antennas, what you do is you pull up from the tails. Okay. Oh, there's lots of dust in here. Um, but yeah, you pull up from the tails, and then the antenna wires will pop off. I don't want to mess with them because sometimes the solder job on them is not too good, and then they can break pretty easily. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to clean it a little and put it back together. Okay. So now that we check that, we're going to go ahead and put this door back in. It goes in at an angle like that. And then this side swings down. You go along the top and you kind of push it like inwards on both sides, like inwards. So that way the clips kind of go in to the, towards the center. Okay. We're going to go ahead and put this screw back in. All right. There's the optical disk drive or um, CD drive, whatever you want to call it, DVD drive slot here. There's one screw that holds that in place. You can remove this screw, and once you take this screw, you can and you can actually take this out. I just slide my fingernail up and down here as I'm pulling, and you can see it kind of like walks it like this. It wiggles it until it comes out, and there you go. It looks like this. This is one of the thicker ones. I think it's like a 12 millimeter thickness or so. Um, and it uses that small SATA connection. All right, we're going to put this back in. You can actually upgrade these or replace the CD drives with um, a hard drive caddy, hard drive adapter. Uh, but basically, we'll put this back in. So if you wanted to add a second hard drive there, you actually could. And yeah, all right. I would, if you're using that, I would just use it for like storage. But if you're upgrading like I am to an SSD, then you're going to want to replace the drive that's under this door. So there's one screw here. This screw comes out. Make sure you don't lose it. Set it aside. And then you pull this one down like this. Okay. If you can, get your fingernails or some tool in there and then use that to pull it. And there we go. So it's pretty dusty in here. So let me clean that up as well. Okay. Get that stuff out of my way. All right, there we go. It's a bit better. I'm just brushing it off into a trash can next to me. Um, this one's also kind of dusty, so let me brush that off as well. Sounds like there's some loose components in here, so I'm going to have to probably tip it over and see what's going on. Okay, let's see. Hmm. Oh, some broken bits of plastic in there. That. that might be why their hard drive's dead. I don't know where the rattling's coming from. It sounds like it's coming from the top edge here. So, okay. Anyways, this one little piece of plastic came out, so we're going to throw that away. Okay. As you can see, there's two slots for RAM and then the hard drive. The hard drive is a two and a half inch SATA hard drive. But let's go ahead and take a look at the stick of RAM first. We'll pull these two metal tabs to the side. Pops up at an angle. Then you can grab this. You can wiggle this to pull it out okay this one's a little bit tough for some reason but here you go this is pc3 12800s so this is ddr3 ram you could put any size you want make sure it's pc3 12800s for co compatibility all right sometimes sometimes the ssd not the ssd the ram um might have some larger capacity limits, but it's pretty rare. Usually it's more limited by the speed. So capacity wise, you could probably get away with using two eight gigs or two 16 gig sticks if you wanted. Um, but yeah, other than that, make sure the speed is the same and you'll probably be fine. Okay, we got the hard drive here. Um, doesn't look like there's any screws holding it in. 
So however you can, we're gonna have to slide this down. Um, there's this little tab that usually is on here. Let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, and I'll rotate it sideways. So there's this little tab here that usually you would use this to pull the hard drive out. So you can grab this tab and you can slide it back. If for some reason it gets stuck, you might have to get some kind of tool in here or you can use your fingernails and then you can use that to kind of pull it back like that, okay? So there we go. We have four screws holding it into this thing. These are all JAS1 screws if I didn't already mention. Um, we're gonna remove those, take the hard drive out, put a new one in, and then I'll show you how to boot from a USB to reinstall Windows. I think we're putting Windows 10 on here. I don't think it supports Windows 11. Anyways, we get all these four screws out. If this video helps you out, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. So as you can see, this thing just slid out easily like that. We're gonna get the replacement hard drive. We have a one terabyte SSD that we're going to be using, okay? Alright, so we'll just get that and make sure you get it to go the right way. You've got the smaller one going this way and the larger one going that way. And then of course this thing, make sure that's going towards the back of the hard drive or SSD. All right, we're going to line this back up. We'll get the four screws back in and then we will put the drive into place, install the windows and we should be good to go. So this one actually the hard drive was bad. Okay, that's why we are replacing it. All right, so I just loosely fit the screws first to make sure everything lines up. Um, the SSD is slightly thinner than the original hard drive, so you can see there's like a gap here. That's normal, okay? So what you want is you want the film to be pressed against the top of the drive, and then go ahead and tighten the screw in, okay? Same thing with this side. Tighten that in, okay, tighten this one in, and tighten this one in, good, alright, oh I tightened it so tight that it even twisted the foil there, <laughs> okay, there we go, so we'll just get this back lined up. This, the screws have little notches that they kind of slot into. Okay, so you get that in and then slide this over. Oops, I think I put it upside down. Sorry, the smaller one goes this way and the larger one goes this way. So I actually put this upside down, my bad. I wasn't paying attention. Sorry for the confusion. Okay, so again, sorry, it actually goes this way. And then, yeah, you want the bottom going as close to that as possible. And you can actually see how the screws line up with this. Not sure why with this model they chose to use foil instead. Usually they'll use like a solid metal caddy, but on this one they use just this thin foily stuff. Okay, so first I'm just loosely fitting the screws again to make sure everything lines up. Last one. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and tighten it down. Good. And to be honest, this foil thing, it's not even necessary. You don't really need this in here. But uh, yeah, they have it, so we'll just put it back. All right, so we'll slide that back in. Good, very nice and simple. Okay, then we're going to, let's zoom out here, get the little piece back in. We'll set this aside for now. We need to get like a thumbnail here maybe. So we'll get a thumbnail. Okay, very simple. We'll get this bottom cover, start it down here make sure it's flush down and then slide it up. Once you've done that, we'll put this screw in. 
All right, and then we'll get this battery back in, just line it up back here and then slot it in. After you're done, uh, make sure these no uh, latches lock back towards the center. We're gonna flip this over. Since this does have battery charge, we don't need to plug it in. Um, and then we're going to get a U USB with a Windows bootable install on it. You can use any bootable USB for this as long as it's bootable by like BIOS Windows computers. All right, next we're gonna turn it on and we're gonna press F10. So you wanna press F10 to get to the one-time boot menu for the Samsung laptops. And here you can see UEFI SanDisk Cruiser Fit. Then we're gonna go here. Oh, it didn't wanna boot my USB for some reason. Um, secure boot is on. Saving changes. So I don't know why I didn't want to boot my USB, but uh, it should. F10. Huh. Something's weird there. It doesn't want to boot my USB. Let's try another USB port here. Maybe because it's meant to run Windows 8? Nope. Okay, that worked. So for some reason, this USB port, it's USB 2.0 here didn't want to take the bootable USB. Let me turn this off and double check. They're both USB 2.0, so I don't know why that port didn't want to work. Let's try a USB 3 port that's down here. Okay, I don't know why it didn't want to boot there, but okay, F10, F10. We'll get to the boot menu and let's try this. And the USB 3 ports work as well. So I don't know why the one very close to the power button doesn't work, but the other ones seem to be fine. So we're basically going to just boot this and install Windows. So that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, please make sure again to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade or repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. That's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. All right, let's drop this spike.